Uh, my name is Stephen Bevan. I'm director at the Centre for Workforce Effectiveness at the Work Foundation, which is part of Lancaster University. If the UK is going to achieve what's now called escape velocity from the economic crisis, we are going to need a workforce that's skilled, engaged and well. And what's really clear is that the mental health of the UK workforce represents a real challenge to our ability to drive productivity and performance. At the moment in the UK about one in six employees have a mental health problem, usually depression or anxiety, and that's something which I think increasingly is affecting the way that people are managed at work and the anxiety in turn that businesses have about the productivity and performance of their workforce. Psychological well-being at work is relatively new concern for most employers. Um, traditionally, employers have been concerned about the physical health and safety of their workforce. But increasingly, we're seeing that um, employees with mental health problems uh, are taking a larger share, for example, of sickness absence from work and reduced productivity. Um, and we now know that uh, of the 140 million lost working days in the UK due to sickness absence, half of those are now attributable to mental illness. Some employers are taking this very seriously. Um, I think they recognise, for example, that the nature of the work that people are asked to do, the intensity of the work that people are being asked to do, particularly in, in tough economic times, mean that they're at risk of putting their employees under severe strain. It's also clear that um, the non-work pressures that people are under, particularly if they're facing uh, financial difficulties or marital problems or wider chronic health problems, also puts a burden on people's psychological resilience and their ability to cope um, with the pressures of both work and non-work issues. Um, some of the employers that we've been working with have put great effort into supporting their line managers to spot the early warning signs of depression and anxiety particularly. And it's interesting to note that in some of those organisations, um, changes in employee behaviour which would have historically been regarded as problems with their performance are now being regarded by line managers particularly as a potential mental health problem. And often people are referred much more quickly, for example, to occupational health or to their GPs uh, by line managers uh, who are concerned about um, the effect of mental health on attendance, productivity and so on. So I think we are seeing some improvements in both awareness um, and in the reduction of stigma about mental health, but it is also clear that we've got much more to do. For example, a survey in 2012 showed that one third of UK workers said they would still not work with someone who had a mental illness. And so, although we can pat ourselves on the back that quite a lot of progress has been made in awareness around mental illness at work and measures to intervene early, um, there's still much to do in terms of uh, attitudes, uh, policy and practice. And I think, um, you know, the, the, good, the good progress we've made uh, needs to be built on uh, if we're to make a, a significant impact on, on mental illness in the working age population. It's clear that a number of organisations are taking the mental health of their workforce extremely seriously. Uh, we've been doing work with organisations like BT and EDF Energy and some of the big banks who recognise that there's a certain vulnerability um, in their workforce um, where the pressure to deliver more with less uh, can have a big impact on people's psychological resilience and their ability uh, to maintain an even keel, I guess, in terms of their mental health at work. And so they've looked very carefully at things like uh, work schedules, job design, uh, the, the use of technology, which can often have the impact of, of intensifying work. Um, and I think that um, we need to learn from these good examples uh, to support organisations who are perhaps less well resourced or have less access to expertise such as occupational health. And it's also important not to ignore the needs of small and medium sized enterprises um, where they often don't have the type of support that the bigger organisations have and yet they're often working to very tight deadlines and have to be incredibly flexible in order to deliver against customer needs. And, and obviously the mental health of people working in those sorts of contexts, not least owner managers, um, need to also be taken into account by uh, clinicians and by policy makers.
One of the big challenges that um, organisations face is to get joined up in coherent activity between the people who can make most difference to the psychological well-being and mental health of the workforce. Um, the three main groups, I guess, are line managers who affect people's day-to-day -day experiences of work, uh, HR professionals who both help shape policy but the way that it's enacted, and occupational health who obviously have the expertise to build a bridge between both the demands of work but also uh, the clinical needs of, uh, of individual employees. Um, it is true that in, in recent history the relationship between those three groups hasn't been fantastic um, but I think the growing pressure on organisations particularly where they have um, problems of presenteeism or sickness absence as a result of mental health uh, have, have focused their mind very much on how they can take preventative action to prevent work being a cause of mental illness uh, and where mental illness is uh, being manifest to do something practical to get, allow people to stay in work or return to work uh, back into psychologically healthy workplaces. So the presentation that I'll be doing will really be focusing on some of the challenges that we face in the UK in terms of managing workforce mental health at a time of greater intensity of work, um, greater pressure from technology and from deadlines, um, and hopefully to provide some practical examples and case studies of how um, organisations can do much more to promote psychologically healthy workplaces, uh, to prevent mental illness becoming a big problem, um, and also to provide environments where people feel happy to disclose their mental health problems so they can get maximum support. I'll be presenting at the Why Mental Health Matters uh, conference, which is being run by Mortley Learning in January. Um, and I want to really focus on some of the, the challenges that we face with the mental health of the U UK workforce. But rather than just analyse the nature of the problem, I want to try and bring to bear some of the good examples of innovative practice, uh, which we know work, um, so that those people attending can get a flavour of the types of solutions that are out there um, and why it's so important that we create psychologically healthy workplaces, help people improve their psychological resilience. One thing I'd like to emphasise in my presentation is the importance of creating workplaces where people feel able and confident to disclose their mental illness. And until we are able to do that, then the stigma around mental illness at work will remain. And it seems to me that's one of the final barriers to promoting an environment where mental illness is talk, spoken about openly and where interventions can be put in place to both prevent mental illness at work but also to support those people who want to return to work and thrive at work with a mental illness.